Hello and welcome. Uh, this video is about creating your own video text server, your own view data server with your own content. It's very simple to do. It makes use of all of the components of the Telstar video text service, except of course you can add your own content and make it look and feel exactly how you like. Um, the system supports edit TF, the uh, online uh, page editor, and everything is transferred to and from the system using JSON. So it's nice and simple. If you want to take part in some retro communications, have your own server, host your own view data pages, well stay tuned. One of the first things to understand about the Telstar components is that they're implemented as Docker containers. Now a Docker container is roughly analogous to a virtual machine. It's a much lighter weight and there's more to it than that. But um, for now at least, and for the purposes of this demonstration, there's no real need to understand Docker, but it's just that Docker is the underlying technology on which it runs. Now the benefit of this is that anywhere that Docker will run, these components will run. So one of the first things we need to do is install Docker. Now Docker can be downloaded from the Docker website, docker.com. Uh, there are versions here for the Mac, for Linux, for Windows. Alternatively, why not check out the package manager of your favorite distribution of Linux and install the version from there. My personal favorite is to install a Docker droplet from DigitalOcean. Um, these cost around four pounds a month. And to be honest, uh, the cost of keeping a laptop on for that period of time would be far greater, I think. Um, I've not done the maths, but I assume it would be. So before we get into the nitty gritty of Telstar and components and containers and so on, um, let's get a system up and running. Now we can do this really quickly with Docker. All that we need is a Docker Compose file and I've placed a link to such a file in the description. Um, I have mine here and as you can see I can, I can view it very easily and edit it here in a Visual Studio Code. So from the directory where you've stored the Docker Compose file, run up a terminal and execute the following command. Now all sorts of things are happening under the covers and we can take a look at that in a minute but for now let's just connect that to our new Videotex system using a Videotex client. There's a great one written in BBC Basic by Richard Russell himself and I've added an entry for local port 6502. Now I've also added one for the port 6503 uh, but we can chat about that later. Anyway let's give it a try. So here we can see our new video tech system. So clearly we're up and running already. At this point, if you've got a network, a Wi-Fi modem, you should be able to connect to it using some real hardware. Now, before we go any further, I'd recommend installing a management app called Portainer. It's really easy to do as it runs into Docker itself. And, and as with most things Docker, it can be installed with a single Docker command. Now you don't have to do this, but it can make life a lot easier going forward. Now I've popped the docker command for this in the description so you can cut and paste it and I'll do the same here. Now once installed you can access it on a local port 9000 and when you start it for the first time you'll be able to set up a password and so on. Okay so here we are, we can now see some Telstar containers, there's a Mongo database, a server, an API thingy and of course Portainer itself. Now I'll come back to this in a minute. So clearly then to run a Telstar based system we need a few key items. We need a video text server, we need a database for all the pages, some persistent storage for the database, an API so we can manage our frames and some general purpose storage for config and so on. And all of this needs to be connected together with a network. Now if at this point the idea of using an API to manage pages and frames and so on bothers you then don't worry. Um, I've got a nice easy utility which makes this a breeze. Now all of this is running within the confines of Docker. So in order to be able to access the system from the outside world, we need to expose a few ports. Now in the case of our server, we've exposed port 6502 and for the API, we have exposed port 8001. Okay, so switching back to Portainer, let's take another look. We can see the containers for the server and database and the API. The volumes are shown in the volume section and it's probably no surprise that the networks appear in the network section. Now whilst we're here, it's worth pointing out that Portainer will allow easy access to each container's logs and it also allows you to connect and attach a command line to each container. 
Okay, so back at the terminal, let's shut the system down and bearing in mind what we now know about the Telstar components, let's have a closer look at the Docker Compose file. If we just look at the major sections for a moment, you can see the Telstar Video Tech service, the Telstar API server, the database, private network, and two volumes. Now one thing to note is that with this section here, we're mapping port 6502 on the Telstar network to port 6502 on the host machine network. This is what allows us to communicate with our Docker implementation of our VideoTech service. Okay, so let's say we want two Telstar servers, each using the same database. And I'll show you why you might want to do this in a minute. This is simple, so we can just add an extra section to the Docker Compose file, and away we go. Uh, here's one I prepared earlier. Just be careful of these parameters when adding more servers. The Telstar wiki will explain all about these, um, now these servers are all using the same database, so it's only really necessary for one server to have the init and install example option specified. Here the second server is exposed to 6503, so now we have servers listing on port 6502 and 6503. Also note that I'm using some environment variable settings to give each server a different display name, and I have server 1 connected to the primary part of the database and server 2 connected to the secondary part, but more about that later. OK, so let's start it up, and if we take a look with Portainer, we can now see the two servers. And it should be no surprise that we can now access each of these with our BBC Basic Video Tech client. OK, so let's log into the API and grab one of the example pages. Now I've got a utility for this, which is creatively named Telstar Util. Now the tool is very handy, but the API is a RESTful API and it can be used using any language or tools that support the HTTP RESTful services. Notice that I'm using user zero and password Telstar API secret. Now this was specified in our Docker Compose file. Now user zero is a special user and I would stick, stick with that until you got your head around the user stuff. All of the details are in the wiki. Now logging in will place a token file in your current folder. So if you have any trouble, just make sure you have write permissions to that folder. Here I've asked for frame 91A from our server. Our server was created with some example content due to the install example switch. And frame 91A is the engineering test page. Well, let's redirect this to a file and take a closer look. I'll just reformat it so we can see it. And as I mentioned, frames are defined using JSON. And like most video tech services, Telstar has pages, each with a maximum of 26 frames. Um, and if this is new to you, don't worry, uh, it'll make more sense when we start adding frames. As I say, full details are in the wiki, and as ever, links are in the description. Now, don't worry that there's a ton of stuff here, much of this can often be ignored, uh, and we'll see that in a minute. The important bit here with this frame is the content and content type. Now, if I pop this URL into a browser, you can see the Edit TF online page editor. Now, Telstar supports Edit TF out of the box, and it's a great way to edit and create pages. Okay, so let's add some new pages to our system. Now here's one of the simplest frames you can have. So let's add this and take a look. Now we didn't specify any content with this page and so it's just added some simple content so that we can see it. Okay, this is a similar frame but with some content added using the Edit TF editor. Let's add this to our system. And there it is there. Now Telstar supports other page content types, for example, here is the markup type. In this frame we've added the header using markup, and we've added some content also using markup. So let's add this frame and take a look at this. As I mentioned earlier, Telstar uses MongoDB as the database for storing frames. Now, the database is separated into two sections, referred to as primary and secondary. Now, so far, we've been retrieving and sending pages to the secondary database. However, in practice, it's probably better to make changes to the secondary database, check them out with a view data client, such as we've been doing, and then publish them to the primary database for the rest of the world to see. You may remember that we set our servers to talk to each of these database sections, respectively. The live Telstar system does this in that the server listening on port 6504 is connected to the secondary database 
ask the servers on port 6502 and 6503 use the primary database and it's a great way to try things out before publishing them. Now here we can see the primary has no knowledge of page 101 but the secondary does which makes perfect sense because we've only added pages to the secondary. Now once we're happy with our creations we can publish them. Now the Telstar utility can be used to perform bulk uploads, retrieve multiple frames and so on and for a little ditty of a program it's pretty handy. The Telstar utility is available for Linux, both um, AMD64 and ARM, uh, also for Windows, both 32-bit and 64-bit, and Mac OS, both Intel and ARM also. And as ever, there's a link in the description. Now you may have noticed in our demo system that we have a few gateway pages. So before wandering off to create your own server, it may be worth just checking them out as they're a great example of how simple it is to create quite complex functionality. Now here's a gateway menu page and if we select one of these pages we can connect to a respective item. Here's the tetrachloromethane site for example. Now this is the JSON for that gateway frame. Notice how the frame type is gateway and that there is a connection section pointing to the tetrachloromethane service. As I mentioned before details of the various frame types along with the other useful info can be found in the wiki. Now when it's time to go public with your service, don't forget to add firewall rules for the ports you've selected. Here you can see the live Telstar service firewall with 6502, 6503 and 6504 exposed to the internet. Note that Portana, normally on port 9000, is not exposed. For that I use an SSH tunnel and I map that to a local port such as port 9090. Now this is a far more secure way of using Portana on a live system, but the choice is yours. At the moment I do a similar thing for the API on port 8001 as I don't really have any users other than me. Uh, but obviously if I did then I would export port 8001 as well or whatever port you chose. One other thing before you go live make sure you change the Telstar cookie secret in the docker compose file. Uh, change it to something unique, a GUID is good and I've added a link to a GUID generated in the description. And also don't forget to change the password for the API. Well I hope the video is of some use or of some interest at least and to be honest if you've got this far you must be pretty keen. Now if you've got anything to say or suggestions and so on please feel free to pop them in the comments and I'll do my best to get back to you. Uh, in the meantime I shall leave you with a sequence of Telstar pages and I'll see you next time.